<laughs> hey up. Right, you couldn't make this up really. Uh, I think what I'm trying to say is I haven't really got a video to show you today because for a few hours yesterday, this channel was taken down. On Tuesday morning, I did the most stupid thing in the whole history of stupidity. Well, I've certainly got to accept some responsibility for it, but, you know, it wasn't totally my fault. And I think I should point out that this channel still isn't out of the woods. There is still a possibility it could get shut down again because YouTube have been completely useless at sorting this out. I think I first started this channel up in 2014 or 2015. At the time, it was just a personal channel. I used it to share trip videos with my mates so I didn't have to bend DVDs, uh, etc. That's why the channel bears my name. It was never intended to be any sort of commercial enterprise. Then in 2017, I saw that there was some potential, if you like, for making something approaching a living out of YouTube. I didn't want to use this channel, so I started up a second channel in early 2017 called A Street Bike Named Desire. I ran that for a few months and it wasn't really advancing very well. Then some advice from a friend of mine, um, he told me to upload the same content onto this channel, run both channels for a while and see what happens. And this channel took off. So basically there were two channels that had identical videos uploaded onto them. And a street bike named Desire, eventually I just let that lie fallow, I stopped uploading to it. Then two years ago, just as the pandemic was starting, in fact just before the pandemic, I had an idea for another channel, I uh, had a little bit of spare time then as well, and I changed the name of a street bike named Desire to The Practical Reef Keeper, and did a series of re reef keeping videos. But then this channel really took off and of course the pandemic and lockdowns hit us which meant I wasn't able to go out and get supplies to make videos for the other channel. So again, I just allowed it to f sort of fall fallow. In fact, up until this week, I don't think I'd even logged on to that channel for about nine months. I just allowed it to keep running with a view to maybe making some use of it in the future. Now, as... A lot of people are probably aware copyright issues are a major thing on YouTube and it's not unknown for, shall we say, people who want to fast track a new channel to just go around and copy other people's videos and then upload them onto a new channel in the hope that they'll suddenly start making loads of money. It never worked, but what it does do is it gets snagged by YouTube's copyright tools which then alert the owner of the original video that someone else has copied the videos and then you're given the option of having those videos taken down. Now this should only work for third party channels, it shouldn't happen uh, for two channels that are on the same account because obviously the copyright owner is the owner of those two channels so there are no copyright issues. Therefore whenever you do copyright searches or the automatic tool does a copyright search it never picks up other videos that are under your ownership through your account. So over the past five years and probably hundreds of searches it's never picked up those duplicate videos that are on a street bike named Desire or the Practical Reef Keeper and alerted me to them because I am the owner of that channel so you know there's no issue something's gone wrong. Now, YouTube traffic, believe it or not, is quite seasonal and it's fairly quiet from the new year up until sort of the middle of summer. Then by August it gets really busy and this channel has been busier than I've ever seen it over the last month or so. On Monday I'd done a bit of filming for Wednesday's video and the intention was to edit that video together on Tuesday morning but also I'd got behind with um, checking through all the comments. I think I had something like 300 comments waiting to be moderated on Tuesday morning. 
the big problem is you have a lot of, um, shall we say, sites run by naughty ladies that put adverts in the comments section. Also, a lot of big currency scams um, post in the comments section, and I, I'd like to remove them. This is a family-friendly channel. I've always tried to keep it that way, and I don't want that sort of thing lurking in the comments section to catch people out. I also had to get the video edited on Tuesday. I knew I had a horrendously busy day to get through, so I got up at 4.30 in the morning, started up my computer with a cup of coffee, still rubbing the sleep out of my eyes, and I got an alert that there was a list of copied videos that had been snagged by the copyright tool. About 16 videos altogether. Now, I had a very quick sort of cursory look at these. They were clearly my content. So I filled out the form um, to get them taken down, which then allowed me to get on with the rest of the day. A couple of hours later, I got an email from YouTube telling me that uh, they'd received my complaint and that the videos had been taken down. All good. And then, about an hour after that, I got um, an email regarding my practical reef keeping channel saying that I'd infringed copyrights and some of my videos had been removed. And it suddenly dawned on me what had happened. Now, something had clearly gone wrong. Those videos should not have been flagged. And getting lists of, um, sort of, if you like, stolen videos thrown at me is a fairly routine thing. It happens more than you would think. So, fair enough, you can say that I should have gone into each video individually and read the small print to see who was using it. Yes, I should, but a mixture of my video editor slowing the computer down because it was creating shadow files ready for me to edit, which makes it really slow, laggy and glitchy. Sleep deprivation and a really heavy work schedule meant that I just filled the form out to get rid of them. It never occurred to me for one moment that I was actually putting in copyright claims against myself. Now, I'm only vaguely aware of how copyright claims can affect a channel. I keep my nose clean. I'm very careful about what material I use. So, really, I've never had to defend a copyright claim because... You know, I just haven't found myself in that position. So at that point, I didn't worry about it too much. I thought, I'll get my video edited up, and then I'll get on with that and get it sorted out. At first, I thought it was actually quite funny. You know, I didn't think it was going to be a major issue. Anyway, a few hours later, sort of early to mid-afternoon, I took a break from editing and set about the task of sorting out what I'd done and returning things back to how they should be. Uh, I followed YouTube's instructions. I wrote an email explaining that I needed to retract the copyright claim that I'd put in, sent them the email, and then waited. Got the video finished, uh, got it rendered, started the upload process, and then I went back to Practical Reef Keeper to see what happened. And then I got a bit worried. What had always been a squeaky clean channel with, you know, no copyright strikes whatsoever, suddenly had had 10 videos removed and it had received two copyright strikes. Now, there were still, I think, around about seven videos waiting to be removed. And once they were removed, that would mean that it would get its third copyright strike. And when a channel receives its third copyright strike, it's deleted. Now, that in itself wouldn't have been the end of the world because, you know, it's not a channel that I'm using. I'd hope to use it in the future, but, you know, it didn't cause a major problem for me. But if that happens and you get three copyright strikes and your channel is deleted, all other channels associated with that account are also deleted, which means I would lose this channel. Now, as I've said, I'm not out of the woods yet. This is still ongoing, but there started the most stressful two days I can remember for a long time. I'd had no response to the email that I'd sent a few hours earlier, and it was clear on checking that they were still continuing to take the videos down. You know, they just hadn't taken any notice of what I'd written. So... I used the live chat facility on the creator support tab to speak to an actual person so that I could 
perhaps get things sort of sorted out. Now, I'm sure this is a familiar story that a lot of people can relate to with customer care centres. In the old days, when you used this facility, you actually spoke to someone, presumably in America, and you could have a pretty easy, coherent conversation with them to get to the root of what your query was. But it soon became clear that, like a lot of international companies, YouTube has now farmed these um, sort of service centres out to some foreign climbs somewhere where the person that you're talking to, English is not their first language, or probably even their second language. Everything that they sort of send back to you in response to what you're telling them just seems to be a copied and pasted, scripted response, and it's clear that they quite obviously do not understand what you're telling them at all. And I got that familiar sensation that the person that I was talking to, their aim was basically to tell me what they thought I wanted to hear, get me off the line so that I can move on the next job, and then they would just forget about the whole conversation that they'd had with me and nothing would happen. I'm sure you've all come across this. Now, I explained the situation as carefully and as simply as I possibly could to this lady about four times. It was clear she didn't understand what I was talking about, and she just kept saying, I have to investigate this, and I'll email you in 24 hours. Well, in 24 hours, there was a good chance that both channels would be gone, so I didn't want to do that. And out of desperation, I copied my retraction email that I'd previously sent to the copyright department, and I pasted it into the conversation because it was set out in a chronological sort of logical order and it was easy to understand big mistake as this conversation went on she told me that she'd been speaking to the copyright department and they were going to get in touch with me i suddenly received an email which looked like a continuation of the email that i'd sent the retraction email with a copied and pasted sort of blurb at the top explaining that they needed some further details from me and telling me, you know, what details they required. I didn't realise until I forensically examined this email the following day that what she'd actually done is she had copied the copied and pasted copy that I'd supplied to her from the conversation pasted it onto a blank email, then copied and pasted a stock sort of time-wasting blurb, which I've received a further two times since then from other operators. And she'd sent it to me purporting to be from the copyright department with a view to me thinking that something was being sorted out so that I would leave her alone, which it worked. That's what I did. I ended the conversation, wrote out a new email with all the details that they required, sent it, hoping that that would now sort the issue out. Of course, it didn't because it was going back to the wrong address. It was going back to her, not the copyright department. And presumably, I don't know, she probably just deleted it as soon as she received it. The following day, uh, the practical reef keeper was deleted because it had received its third copyright strike which meant that this channel would soon sort of follow the same fit. It would be deleted, and I started to panic a little bit. I examined that email that I've just been talking about with the lady from the support centre, realised what she'd done, so I quickly copied and pasted my response and then sent it to the copyright centre. And then I got back on with the support team again. Now, I got a very similar response in a lot of ways. The guy that I was speaking... Well, actually, I was speaking to a lady initially who cut me off mid-conversation because, obviously, the issue was just too complicated for her to deal with, so she decided the best way to do it is just end the conversation. I then spoke to a guy who... Really, the conversation started off pretty much the same. He was just trying to get rid of me. Um, I mentioned that I'd spoken to someone the day before. Surprise, surprise, there was no proper record of it. The um, issue hadn't been actioned. Now, eventually, after a considerable length of time, I think I finally got through to this guy what the issue was. He actually gave me a case number which I hadn't received previously, which 
indicated that something had actually been instigated and he told me not to worry it would be back to me within 24 hours um my channel wouldn't be deleted because i'm the complainant we ended the conversation and lo and behold i got an email from him um sort of confirming that action was taking place and then half an hour later i got a response email from the copyright department telling me that they had put everything right. I checked and they hadn't. Also, this channel had gone. I don't know what time it was shut down exactly. So, basically, from then on in, I was so angry that I'd been, you know, very polite. I'd been very patient with these people. They were basically just taking the complete piss out of me so they didn't have to actually do the jobs. And I started spamming the copyright department with the same email asking them, you know, to give me a situation report, what was going on, my channel have now been deleted. And it did the trick to some extent. I got a response telling me that they'd put some videos back on, but then they give me a list of URLs telling me that I'd given them the wrong URLs. Now, I've got no idea where they'd got those URLs from because they went on the list that I'd supplied to them. They just appeared from nowhere. I pointed out that those URLs didn't exist on the list that I'd given to them previously. I think what had happened is the person had just got confused and they'd been trying to reinstate videos perhaps from someone else's case or... Or at least that's what I thought at the time. On checking, none of the videos have been reinstated. All 16 videos are still deleted. There's been no attempt, as far as I can see, to put them back on. So that really confused me. Now, I eventually got both channels back on, but like I said, the videos haven't been reinstated. The Practical Reef Keeper channel still has one copyright strike. It shouldn't have any. Now, this completely goes against the grain of uh, what they initially told me. They told me that they couldn't remove a copyright strike until the videos had been reinstated. Yet, yeah, clearly they can. And there is still a danger that this channel could be taken down. Now, this is the copyright department that we're talking about here. This is the mainstay of their work, you know, dealing with copyright infringements and reinstating uh, removed videos when there's been a mistake like this. This is their area of expertise. This is all they do. They should be able to do this wearing a blindfold with both hands tied behind the back in the sleep. Yet... Clearly, they're just not competent at it, even when you take them by the hand and lead them through it. They still can't do it. It looks to me like, out of desperation, they've done some sort of manual override to remove two of the copyright strikes. I don't know, but that's what it looks like. And the risk with that is that if some sort of automatic analytics check is done at some times and the discrepancy is noticed... Both channels could instantly be deleted without notice. So, as I've said, I'm not out of the woods with this yet. The other possibility, of course, is that this could flag up on someone's system somewhere. They won't know what the backstory is, so they will manually replace the strikes and, you know, with the same result. Now, this is the state of play today. Today being Thursday, obviously, I'm editing this video together and this video will be published on Friday morning. Hopefully, things will have changed by then and it'll be sorted out. But until then, my main reason for publishing this little story is if this channel suddenly disappears, that's the reason. I'm continuing to campaign... <laughs> The copyright department via email i've actually uh, sort of responded to two emails that they've sent me while i've been making this video i'm hopeful that it can be resolved but youtube is a huge stupid lumbering machine it's fine when it's running on automatic 
but when something out of the ordinary happens and it requires intervention, clearly everything just falls apart and, you know, I've encountered similar things in the past. So, fingers crossed. Right, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and my other videos and in doing so, helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate it. I would also appreciate it if you would lend your support by leaving a like on this video and perhaps subscribing to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. I will, hopefully, fingers crossed, be back next week. So until then, please ride safely and I'll see you soon.